Hi, I'm Greg from RV Haulers. We're here today in Calgary at Polar Mobility. I'm going to introduce you to the idea of how we can get an APU, an auxiliary power unit, underneath an RV hauler to supply some power, run air conditioning, but I also want to make sure we explain to you some of the limitations of the solution. Now, Polar Mobility is recognized here in Western Canada as some guys that for a really long time, they've been doing RVs, air conditioning systems, diesel fired heaters, and APUs. Let me take you into the shop and introduce you to some of the gents and show you a project that we're working on. We're not gonna go in that door. We're gonna go in this door. There's Jerry and there's Chris, the owner, on the right-hand side. Polar Mobility, you can see one of their service trucks over my shoulder. Chris has got over 50 employees that work for him right now, but he's been doing some really cool design work. And I'm gonna turn the camera around. He's been doing some teaching of me. He's gonna make sure that I say things right. And I'm gonna explain to you a very cool APU project that we have on the go. So here we are inside of Polar Mobility. I've got Chris right behind the camera and he's gonna make sure that everything that I say is accurate and true. He's nodding. Okay, yes, sir. I'm going to try to do my best here. Here's what we've got is the RV hauler named Fisher. And underneath this sleeper is a ProHeat diesel powered auxiliary power unit that produces 6,000 watts. No, 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 he says 4,000 4, watts. watts. 4,000 watts and a maximum of 35 amps for a short period of time. He's still nodding behind me, everyone. Chris is still agreeing. Yes. <laughs> so what we also have, I'm gonna open a jockey box, is we have an air conditioning unit that runs off of household 120 volt 20 amps is what it will draw this is the, the case has been taken off of it right now but this unit alone to kick over and really to run requires 20 amps so imagine if you will we've got a fifth wheel behind this rv and we're boondocking we are in a remote location and we want to have something in that trailer run off the generator or the auxiliary power unit in this RV hauler. Here's the issue. The line loss that we have over that great big long distance is considerable. And if you have an air conditioner inside that trailer trying to draw at least 20 amps to turn over, a little bit more for a fraction microsecond, then it's going to eventually kick down to 13 amps, 11 amps. I still have nodding behind me. I'm still doing okay. There's going to be line loss on this entire distance. And the big warning here is that depending upon the gauge of the wire that runs from the trailer out, then you're going to have to have a massive extension cord from the end of that plug to the RV hauler where we plug it in, there's gonna be line loss. As well, Chris has pointed out that there are distances within the fifth wheel as well. From where that cord comes in, which is usually at the back of the trailer, the panel may be halfway up, three quarters of the way up, it can be near the front. So you may be going from all the way up here at the RV hauler, at the sleeper, through extension cords, the length of your RV, into your RV and still coming back to a panel and you've got loss at all of those points. <sighs> Take a breath. I'm gonna explain some other thoughts here. Oh, now this is art. And here's what we're trying to do. The, well, let's just use this one. More art. Here is our generator, our APU. We want to pull through an RV standard of wiring to one of two things. We want to have the RV plugged in and we want to have the air conditioner that's inside the RV hauler pulling from this device as well. 
And it's really, because of the limitations of this, the really a 30 amp plug. It says the generator will put out 35, but really the plug we're going to have to go through is 30 amps. We can only have one or the other of these plugged in at one time. So if the generator's running, we're boondocked now, okay, boondocked. Generator is running, the little diesel motor is running. The fifth wheel we will have to plug in to the generator. We're going to create a manual transfer switch. Or Say we've got just the RV hauler and we want to run the air conditioning off the generator, we're going to have to unplug this and plug this air conditioner in. Now, let's talk about shore power. So here's the next scenario. So we're back to having the trailer back there. And now we're in a campground again. So we've got a pedestal in the campground behind us. What Chris has explained carefully is that really there's only a maximum of 50 amps coming into that pedestal and it's three wires. It's not like there's a 50 amp exclusive set of wires and a, you know underground a set of 30 amp wires coming in and a 15 amp set of wires coming in. It's like one bundle of wires coming into that pedestal. That is a choke point. <clears throat> if you've got a trailer back there plugged into the pedestal on the side of the campground and you want to plug in your RV hauler, which is going to draw 20 amps, you can certainly, with a coach, a fifth wheel, and with the RV hauler, you can draw more amps than that pedestal will put out. So the net result is you can't have three air conditioners running at the same time with most services that are in campgrounds. Perhaps they've got more than we don't know about. I'm not going to say that 100% of the time, but three air conditioners, one in the RV, <clears throat> two in the coach or more, may draw too much power. As well, remember inside your RV you've got microwave, TVs, hair dryers, right? everybody's got lots of those sitting around, hair joke. Uh, you got to be careful about what you're going to be drawing. <clears throat> so realistically at this point in time we have to have you know uh, the understanding that this RV hauler yes it says it can the APU on this thing can put out 35 amps remember you're choking yourself down to a 30 amp plug when you're plugging into it <clears throat> so that's limiting things you got line loss you got other objects running around uh, the RV hauler and you can overload that APU pretty easily. Now, let's go to our shore power scenario. So we're not boondocking, we've got shore power here at a pedestal somewhere in the campground and we're plugging it into the side of the sleeper <clears throat> right here. Remember, that extension cord coming in is 15 amp, maybe 20 amp. But really, it's a 15 amp standard plug. 15. It's 15. And here inside the jockey box, the plug-ins that distribute inside the sleeper, they all run through a single 15 amp breaker. I'll show it to you. It is that one right there. So the power comes in the bottom and it distributes to one, two, Three, three different cords come off this thing, and even there's this ground fault uh, plug right here in front of us. So there are four sets of duplex outlets inside that sleeper. Boy, can you, with all those outlets, can you overload that 15 amp circuit? Yes, you can. So, <clears throat> let me describe to you what we envision for what we, what the smart guy over here, just outside camera range, envisions for the shore power distribution inside this sleeper. If we are in a campground and we want to have power from the pedestal running into that 15 amp circuit, it's going to come in. There's going to be a transfer switch that will protect the system that in case the generator turns on, it will disconnect it. We won't have two sine waves trying to conflict with one another. <coughs> but there will be an automatic transfer switch in there uh, that ensures that the generator power never conflicts with the power that's plugged in from the side here. 
here's a gotcha. When you are running that condenser on the back of the sleeper, right there, there we go. It's like looking in a mirror right now, looking in the camera. When you're running that condenser, that condenser uses 12 volts. So if you are plugged into shore power, you're running the air conditioner, that condenser, it, the condenser part of it is using 12 volts. It's drawing down your batteries. And Chris has pointed out that the amp draw of that condenser, plus say you got the fridge inside the sleeper running, plus you've got at least one amp of just parasitic draws for all the computers that are always running. Remember how these things will, it, even when the truck is turned off, the computers inside these trucks are drawing power. They're always on, a, a good portion of them. They will draw down your batteries. So another part of the solution is if you want to have that air conditioner running when you're in a campground, you have to have a really good battery charger built into the whole solution, which Chris has the perfect one. It does the sulfating of the batteries as well. It'll certainly keep up and make sure that the truck batteries don't get damaged or harmed due to uh, drawing the battery level down too low. There is a shore power kit that you can buy from the manufacturer of that APU. The reality is there are individual components that do a better job and are less expensive than buying that shore power kit. Um, some of the ch uh, charge controllers that Chris is talking about actually come from the solar world. And let me show you some of the other plans we have for where we want to put some plugs to meet our customers needs. Imagine if you will, there's the trailer back there and we got a big long heavy gauge extension cord coming up and we want to be able to run some things in that trailer off of the APU, here's what we envision. We're gonna put a floor, a big grommet with a door here. It's got some little rollers around the outside, but what you'll be able to do is take the extension cord from the trailer, feed it up underneath through the hole, and we're gonna have a plug most likely up here. So the 30 amp plug is gonna be there, the RV style 30 amp plug. So you'll take your cord through the hole, plug it into the back wall, probably close the door so just the cable is going through that little opening and close this door. Also in here, we're gonna have a second cord that's gonna be probably just brought off the wall that's gonna be for the truck air conditioner that I showed you with the cover off. It was in that jockey box over there. There's going to be a cord ran from that to here and it will just be sitting here. So you need to run, remember my art picture, you need to run one or the other. We're going to run the cord to the trailer or you're going to run the air conditioner inside the truck off of the APU. It's one or the other because very quickly you will overload that APU if you tried to run too. All right, he's not hiding anymore. This is Chris. This business, Polar Mobility, is in three locations in Canada. Chris has owned this company for 35 years. How he got his start, interesting. He, he doesn't tell stories all that often, but I've learned the secrets behind Polar Mobility. Polar started working for the Canadian military uh, more than 35 years ago, and they did exclusively research and development for the Canadian military. Uh, what Chris and his company designed was in a short period of time, they had to have Arctic capable military vehicles ready to be battle ready, right Chris? Yeah. They had to be battle ready in 20 minutes. And what they did is they, they made Chris meet this objective. The, the military vehicle was parked in the Arctic. They water bombed it, fully froze it, and in 20 minutes it had to have armaments, hydraulics, heat, engine running up to a certain uh, torque you told me, and they had to break the tracks loose of the ice. And Chris's company is the only company that met the Canadian military specs.